So the brother asks a very good question, and that is, what is our position about alternative life forms, i.e. aliens? Do Muslims believe in aliens or not? And the fact of the matter is that this isn't a funny question, it's a very serious question. But we don't call them aliens. Has Allah created other beings? Or are we the only creation of Allah? That is the question. And the response is, we will never know for sure in this world, and most likely in the next we won't care. <laughs> but, some scholars, including Ibn Taymiyyah, have opined that Allah Azza wa Jal has created other life forms. And that this goes back to the perfection of Allah being al khalaq Khalaq means the one who continues to create. So the notion that the only creation is us, and after we're gone there will be no other creation, it seems to suggest as if la hawla billah that Allah is not really creating perpetually, continuously. And Ibn Taymiyyah felt that this diminishes the majesty of Allah. That he felt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been constantly creating and will constantly continue to create to no end. And that what we know is only our world. That in our world Allah began in this manner and there's going to be Yawm Al-Qiyamah. This is our portion. There are others as well, before us and after us. Are they simultaneous to us? Ibn Taymiyyah didn't talk about that. Ibn Taymiyyah is talking about the issue of Allah always creating. But there is no negation of the fact that other worlds could be simultaneous to us. Or other creations could be simultaneous to us. And there are many evidences that might possibly suggest this. So, please don't misquote me. Don't tweet Yasir Qadi saying there's aliens. Please, careful. <laughs> Keep my reputation and others. I'm saying there is some evidence to suggest that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created other creations. Whether they are before us or after us or the same time as us, the Quran does not mention anything. But the Quran might possibly suggest, is that clear? That there are other creations. It might possibly not suggest that either. What are some of the evidences? Number one, He has created things you will never know, you don't know about. So you will never know, which means this is not something you can see. He has created things you don't know about. And we continue to discover new species every day. That's not what Allah is talking about. Something else. Number two, that Allah says in the Quran that خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ الْأَرْضَ وَبَثَّ فِيهِمَا مِنْ دَابَّ Allah has created all of the heavens and the earth and He has scattered throughout all of them creatures. Not just on the earth. The Samawats and the Samawat as we talked about in Surah Yusuf and in the Tafsir, uh, the Samawat is not just our heavens, it is beyond our heavens. And Allah says He has scattered creatures in all of them and if He wants to, He can gather all of them up at once. Or He can gather the two of them together. Now you can understand this verse to mean the Day of Judgment, which is the majority interpretation. Or you can understand it to mean Allah has created all different creatures and if He wanted to, He could cause them to meet. Both are linguistically possible. There are other evidences as well. I'll just jump straight to the one I think, Wallahu A'lam, is the strongest evidence to suggest that there might be other creations of Allah. And Allah knows best. Surah Isra, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمَ وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَرَزَقْنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَى كَثِيرٍ مِمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا تَفْضِيلًا We have honored the children of Adam and we have carried them in the land and in the seas in our times we add in the airs and we have given them many things and we have preferred them, humans over many other things that we have created which means we have preferred some over them as well. Do you understand? وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَىٰ كَثِيرٍ We occupy a high rank according to this verse. But not 
the highest. You could interpret this. Again, you could. All of this is ihtimalat, right? Which means, now in the world that we inhabit, who is at the top of the pyramid? I mean, in the creation. It's us. Who bowed down to us? The angels. The jinn. So then we are at the top in this world of the creation, right? Yet Allah says in Surah Isra that we have honored the children of Adam over many other things we have created. Not all. So again, these, these are all gray areas. So to, to summarize, and with this we conclude, we went way over time. The Quran does not explicitly claim that there are other life forms or before or after us. But a number of famous theologians, Ibn Taymiyyah has an entire section dedicated to it. And one famous non-Muslim scholar by the name of John Hoover, J-O-N-H-O-O-V-E-R, has written an entire paper. If you have, I think it's even on PDF Google now, just Google it. It's called The Perpetuity of Creation in the Thought of Ibn Taymiyyah. It's in English, it's in fancy schmancy academic English, but it's in English. And you just Google it by John Hoover, The Perpetuity of Creation and the Thought of Ibn Taymiyyah. It's an entire paper where he compiles what Ibn Taymiyyah said in his evidences in simple English, well, not simple English, but in English. And basically, this is the summary of it that he says, it befits the majesty of Allah to have created and to continue to create, and we are but one of Allah's infinite creations. And Ibn Taymiyyah believed, or he's, I should say he suggested, and he defended the position, that we are not the only creation of Allah. And that it is somewhat arrogant to assume that we, have, we are the only creation. Rather, Allah has created other creations, and He will continue to create other creations after us. That we are but one of the infinite creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, this is His position, and I support it. But at the end of the day, we don't know for sure. I'll fin finish with one verse. The verse that I think is perhaps one of the strongest to indicate that there are, or there were, or there will be other creations of Allah is Allah saying in Surah Isra, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمَ وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَرَزَقْنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَىٰ كَثِيرٍ مِمَّنْ خَلَقُنَا تَفْضِيلًا We have honored the children of Adam. And we have allowed them the opportunity to ride in the oceans and on the animals. We've given them things that other creatures have not been given. Then Allah says, And we have blessed them over many other creations that we have created. Now, in the creations that we know, the world around us, are animals and jinn higher than us or are we higher than them? Louder. Who is at the top of the hierarchy? We are. Did, the, did we bow down to the angels or the angels bow down to us? The angels bow down to us. So the righteous of the men are better even than the angels. And we know the jinns also were told to bow down. And obviously the animals are lesser than us. Yet Allah says in Surah Al-Isra, we have privileged men over many other creations, not all other creations. There could be other creations of Allah that have been privileged over us with things that we do not have. There could be. So again, to conclude this question, please don't post on Twitter, Sheikh Yasir Qadi believes in UFOs. No, calm down, relax, breathe. What I'm saying is, the evidences are ambiguous. We don't hold, I don't say for certainty either position, but I personally lean towards Ibn Taymiyyah's opinion, which is, that Allah continually creates creations. And we are but one creation. Before us there were creations. After us there will be creations. And even Ibn Taymiyyah says this seems to be the possibility. He does not say this is the truth and the haqq. Because the Quran did not explicitly tell us. My beloved brothers and sisters, as Muslims we believe that Allah has created humans as the best of creation. Endowed with intellect, free will and the ability to discern right from wrong this elevated position comes with great responsibility Allah says in the Quran indeed we have created men in the best of stature to honor this divine gift we must strive to cultivate the best character and conduct in our daily lives it is through our behavior and treatment of others that we truly reflect the beauty of Islam the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam serves as the perfect model for 
good character known as Al Amin. He was compassionate, truthful, and kind to everyone, including those who wronged him. The Prophet ﷺ said, The best among you are those who have the best manners and character. Emulating his conduct means being honest, forgiving, and respectful. Whether we are dealing with family, friends, or strangers, by doing so, we not only earn the love of Allah, but also inspire others to appreciate the beauty of Islam. Adopting good character does not require monumental efforts. Begin with small acts like speaking kindly, helping those in need, and avoiding harsh words or actions. Treat others the way you wish to be treated and remember the Prophet Sallallahu advice. Even a smile is a charity. Let us strive to be patient, humble and generous in our dealings, ensuring that our character reflects the teachings of the Quran and Sunnah. In doing so, we fulfill our role as the best of creation and bring blessings to our lives and those around us. <coughs> Help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description.